Welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about conditional statements. And in this lesson, you will not feel like you are in a math class at all. But what we're doing is we are starting this whole language of logic that we use in proofs. And we are starting this whole foundation of reasoning. So keep that in mind as we're going through this, that there is a purpose, and it is to start developing our proofs. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a conditional statement. And a conditional statement is an if-then statement. An example would be, if Oak Ridge High School wins every football game, then they will be league champs. And the hypothesis is the part following the if. So in this case, the hypothesis is Oak Ridge High School wins every football game. And the conclusion is the part in blue, and it's the part following then. In this case, the conclusion would be they will be league champs. Now, in math, mathematicians are rather lazy. So if we can, we would like to use any shortcuts that we possibly can. And what we're going to do is we are going to create a symbolic notation system for our conditional statements. And in this case, instead of writing the hypothesis, Oak Ridge High School wins every football game, we're going to substitute and give that whole phrase a letter P. And instead of writing out this whole thing here, the conclusion, they will be league champs, we're going to substitute and give this whole conclusion a letter Q. So if we see the letter P, we know that we're talking about this whole statement in red. If we see the letter Q, we know that we're talking about this statement here that's in blue. And putting it all together, we would write it like this and add an arrow. And what this says, if P, then Q. Now let's talk about finding the truth value of a conditional statement. We need to analyze every conditional statement and see if it is true or false. And if you find one counterexample for which the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false, then the truth value of the conditional is false. Well, let's take a look at an example. If we have the conditional statement, if a month has 28 days, then it is February. Well, let's look at the conclusion and see if it is indeed true for every time that the hypothesis happens. If a month has 28 days, then it is February. Hmm, can you think of other months that have 28 days? I sure can. I can think of 11 others. All we need is one. We could list all 11, but any one would be perfect. I pick December because it's my favorite month. So we have found the one counterexample that would prove that this whole conditional statement is false. Now let's look at some new vocabulary. We're going to look at related conditional statements. And we're going to start with a conditional statement and then discuss the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. But let's look at the conditional statement. If an angle measures 100, then it is obtuse. Now let's put it in our symbolic notation. Again, we're going to give the hypothesis a P and the conclusion a letter Q. So instead of writing the whole thing, we could just write it this simply. If P, then Q. Now let's look at the truth value. Can you think of a single instance where if an angle measures 100 that it is not obtuse? I cannot because that fits right into the definition of an obtuse angle. So this conditional statement is true. Let's take a look at a new word, converse. It means to exchange or switch the hypothesis and conclusion. So writing that out it would be if an angle is obtuse, then it measures 100. So again, you can tell by the colors that we have switched the hypothesis and the conclusion. So with the symbolic notation, we would do the exact same thing. We would just switch it. So now we have if Q then P. Now let's see about the truth value. Let's read it really carefully. If an angle is obtuse, then it measures 100. Can you think of a counterexample where the conclusion would be false? Well, how about if it measures 101? If it's 101 or 102 or 103, it would still be obtuse. But this is basically saying that 
If an angle is obtuse, every time it's going to measure 100. Well, that is not the case. So this would be false. Now let's take a look at the word inverse. It means to negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Negate means the opposite statement. So for example, if we have the word is, the opposite would be is not. Or if we have the word does, it would be does not. So negating the original conditional statement, we would change it to if an angle does not measure 100, then it is not obtuse. Look above at this conditional statement. It's exactly the same, except we have added does not and is not. With our symbolic notation, this is a new symbol, and it just means not. So in this case, we would say if not P, then not Q. Now let's look at the truth value of this new statement. If an angle does not measure 100, then it is not obtuse. Well, let's look at an example of 101. That does not measure 100, but 101 is obtuse. So that one counterexample would make this false. The next word is contrapositive. And the way that I remember this word is that it's the longest word. Well, it's the one that you do the most to it. You do the converse and the inverse. So you switch and negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So it would read, if an angle is not obtuse, then it does not measure 100. And in our notation, we would just switch the letters, and then we would negate them. So it would say, if not Q, then not P. And let's look at the truth value. If an angle is not obtuse, then it does not measure 100. I cannot think of a single counterexample to make that false. So this would indeed be true. To summarize, the converse is just switching, the inverse is negating, and the contrapositive is switching and negating. I'll see you guys in class.